How are you doing? Thank you so much for everybody who responded to the Facebook post about the uh, what had been given to us regarding the trial and what was apparently quite a shoddy trial and upset a lot of people. And um, there's a few themes came up in your comments, which I'm going to sort of summarise. And then, uh, as as a friend of mine and a colleague uh, in the in the coaching profession, Billy Vine quite rightly said we should maybe come up with some solutions as well. So basically going to summarise everything and then come up with some solutions, hopefully, in between. But thank you so much for your interaction and just know that this was done in such a way so that we can actually present this as a body of evidence to the people involved and say, look, you might need to consider changing. Um, some of you were really angry. I had to laugh at Tim Woodhead's comment, my mate there, <laughs> sack them all. Um, there was a few others there, quite good. But um, yeah, look, uh, for those who don't know the story right, um, there was a trial, report came to us, close to 90, 100 players at a trial that apparently lasted an hour, and they needed to get 40 players from that. The field wasn't a full-size field, it was a touch field. Most players played out of position. Uh, some players only played three to five minutes of the game. The, the selectors were actually refereeing the game. Um, players who didn't trial were selected for the next stage, so some people didn't have to turn up and were already automatically picked. And substitutions were players going up to other players and saying, please, can I replace you in that position? So, yeah, it doesn't sound great, does it? Um, look... Most of your feedback, most of your comments on the Facebook post, of which there were well over 100, basically centred around a couple of things. Number one, it's happened too much, it's happened forever. Some of you said it's just the way it is. Well, I'll be honest with you, hopefully it starts to change. I mean, um, it, it can't happen forever because it's not right. OK, it's going to stop and maybe rugby league needs to be a market leader in this because other sports have similar nepotistic issues or disorganised issues, disorganisation issues, sorry. And But let's be, a, let's be a, a market leader in this if we can. Uh, the other main thread that came through is that you all felt that the team was already be, already been picked or a big chunk of it. Now, my recommendation there is that if that is the case for anybody who's running a trial, my advice is to be totally open and transparent about where those people sit in your thoughts as either a selector or selectors. So one way of doing that is having a team which is full of players that you think should already be in the team, in the final team. And then when you trial against that team, if you are better, let's say prop B gets over prop A in that trial game, then maybe you can have a discussion about that person. That's one way of combating that. I think the worst thing that happens is, and I know my friend Rick Higgins, Rick Higgins mentioned this and a few other people, people go to trials expecting to have a fair trial. If it's not fair, then it's a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted energy and all that kind of thing. Um, so they were the two themes, the whole... Um, it's been happening forever and players already picked. Another one that came up was trials not being a good option. Unfortunately, because of resources, and I, and I think it was my friend Daniel Safita who mentioned this, that because of resources, you sometimes have to do things quickly. That doesn't mean you have to not do them fairly, right? Um, also, with better planning and better preparation, you can get over these things. I'm going to attack the bits one by one that are brought up in the post and, and sort of give my solutions and based on our discussions and everything else. First one, there were close to 90 to 100 players on trial and a trial lasted approximately for an hour. Well, that there is a collision of two big things. Um the 90 to 100 players and only having an hour, right? You've either got to have 90 to 100 players and have close to three hours, or you've got to reduce your 90 to 100, right? So let's attack the 90 to 100 first. If there's an application process, you're going to either have to turn people away or have different days for different people or different time slots for different people. It shouldn't be a shock to you that 90 or 100 turn up based on your prep. 
The other thing is, another way of going about this kind of scenario was ring all the coaches in your relevant competition. I did that uh, with one rep side. I, I touched base with all coaches. And of course, coaches, if they've got three players that are worthy of selection, they'll put six forward because they want their players to go through. But that's you just do your due diligence on it and, and work all that out. So you can get coaches' recommendations too. Um, if somebody is not playing in somebody's first team, let's say it's a club or a school or whatever it may be, but then they trial and end up getting in a rep side, that doesn't look good, right? You know there's something not quite right there. So it's important to have the liaison with the coaches in your sphere, in your competition. Um, so, yeah, the solutions there are either reduce your 90 to 100 via an application process or through study and um, networking prior to that, or create more than an hour. But otherwise, you've got to be prepared for a try. You can't just leave it open and say, turn up on that day, because basically the provision wasn't there for those players to flourish. Throw in the fact that it seemed that other players were already picked, well, you can understand why people are frustrated. The field used wasn't a full-size field, it was a touch field. That is just awful. Like it... In Australia, we have no shortage of rugby league fields. So come on, guys, like get a rugby league field. Um, most players players were played out of position. Again, I think the numbers and the time has obviously made it a bit of a, uh, a you know what. And the the way around that is again, it's your preparation for the trial. So you get your players to write down what positions they want to be tried in. You can actually structure it, right? You can say, right, uh, Billy or Jane or whatever, you're playing the first 15 minutes, left edge or whatever it may be, right? Because they've asked for it. And you can also ask them to name two positions maximum, right? Um, but again, with these time constraints and everything else, this was always going to happen. So your time constraint and your numbers have thrown you right off. Some players only receive three to five minutes of playing time. Again, factor it in, structure it, stop the game every 10 minutes maybe and say, right, you lot, you're on. If I'd have turned up and there was 100 players and they were on a touch field, we would have been going for longer than an hour. And I would have structured it so that 25 played for 30 minutes, another 25 played, you know, or 26, should I say, um, and done it that way. Like, you've got to try and be fair and transparent to everyone. Selectors were refereeing the game. Well, again, the selectors need to take some ownership of that and get some people around them to help. One thing in this area that we're talking about, there's a lot of rugby league knowledge. And you can form a committee of selectors or independent selectors or whatever it may be to run their eye over it. Um, players who didn't trial were selected for the next stage. I mean, again, I think sometimes there is a case for that, be it an injury or other commitments. So, for example... Um, you know, if somebody's at a wedding or something like that when the trial's on or they're injured for a week or whatever. But again, you've got to be open and transparent about it and make sure everyone thinks that they've had a fair crack. Um, and then substitutions involve players being encouraged to choose which player they replace on the field. Do I have to answer that? Like, that's just shocking. So look, in terms of... And Billy, I really want to thank you on here for... For, you know, it's a real good point that you made. Let's go for solutions. Well, the solutions are plan better, um, be prepared. They are get to know what's in your area, get the wisdom of crowds, get the wisdom of the coaches, have a fair idea, but also plan it and structure it so that everybody gets at least 10 minutes in their favourite position. Uh, you know, some people, I think it was Mr. Safiti again said, Trials aren't the best way. Or somebody said, trials aren't the best way. You need to watch them over games. Well, that's very hard if you've not got the resources to do that. But what you can do is build up a network with all the coaches. And you can also ask the opposition coaches which players they've feared on the other side. And before you know it, you've got a great set of, of eyes there that have come up with some good information for you. I'll tell you why this is important, though. It ruins kids' lives. It, it changes their directions. It takes people away from the game. There was a coach, Rick, who mentioned that one, of the re that one of the reasons he's away from the game is this kind of stuff happening. It's happening too often. We're in a world now where we're talking about mental health and well-being and all that kind of thing. Well, what do you think it does for a kid's well-being if they go to a trial, they think they've been unfairly treated, 
they think it's already pre-booked. What do you think that does to a child's mental health and well-being? So yes, it is a massive issue and we lose people to the game for because of this. So thank you so much for all your comments. A uh, hundred and something people can't be wrong and we're going to be using this for a, a force for good. Okay, all the best. Thank you very much.